So, it's 10.50. Hope you had a good break, could rest a bit, because now I can see that uh, uh, our next speaker, Dieter Schwechten, is already ready to present. And, uh, well, as I said before, the, you could see from the title that it has something to do with something ancient and something modern. And now we will understand a little bit more about this project. So, Professor uh, Schwechten, please, the, the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, Here we are. Yeah, we can see the screen. Okay, fine. Um, so um, the title is uh, The Rebirth of the Greek Sailwind Mill for Renewables, the Traditional Appearance of the Rotor, but Modern Mechatronics and Advanced Controls. The name of the project, uh, what we have uh, is Sailwind. Um, in fact, it's a student project, uh, which we follow about six years now at the University of Applied Scientists, um, HTWG Constance in Germany. The TWG stands for Technical, Economical and Design. Um, so uh, we have uh, quite a number of disciplines at our university with six faculties and departments. So on the project, we had about, uh, about 20 bachelor thesis and master thesis by now, um, finished successfully as the students work in alone or in teams. Um, and it's quite nice because they are very motivated and committed to work on renewable energy topics. Um, also have a number of colleagues who are supporting the students uh, in the projects uh, professionally. Um, as you can read in the header, our goal is we want to give birth to a fully automated unique wind turbine based on the traditional Greek type sail windmill and use them for um, energy production. Um, one has to know that uh, in former times, the miller had to work hard to operate these mills, um, uh, turning the mill's head into the wind, if possible, rolling and adjusting the sails could be also very dangerous in sudden thunderstorms and gusty weather, as these mills don't, didn't have brakes. Um, it was not allowed to sleep during operation. So many of the mills broke down in heavy storms by the years without supervision. And think of also uh, the massive exodus in all the countries. Um, we will see sad witnesses of uh, broken mills in, on Santorini Island in, uh, in Greece. Um, the Kiklads uh, in the Aegean Sea became one of the most windy regions in the Mediterranean Sea in the last 40 to 50 years due to climate change. Um, in Odysseus times, it was air uh, calms. So many locations there, um, you can see on the uh, wind atlas, uh, have average wind speeds of 10 and more meters per second. Um, and we thought this potential should be utilized. In fact, the um, conditions are quite ideal for sailwind uh, because there are thousands of sailwinds throughout the Mediterranean. Um, so Italy, Turkey, uh, Portugal, and even Southern France. In most of these countries, there's a great need of uh, using and applying renewable energy sources to catch up the European energy climate targets. And uh, the mills are a cultural heritage of these countries. Therefore, are, they are very well accepted. In fact, uh, there are activists uh, growing resistance against now big bladed wind turbines, especially in tourist regions. Um, on the technical side, the mills run slowly and quietly. Often they stand in the middle of villages or very close to houses. So people live there. Um, so the low speeds uh, of the rotor uh, can help to preserve birds and bugs. And uh, think of that, that the market for small wind turbines is booming now and uh, the central energy production. Um, here you see one of my uh, <laughs> favorite examples. 
many of these windmills, so they stand uh, near to villages and uh, in very touristic um, um, spots, um, beautiful spots. Um, this is a picture of Hydra Island, uh, um, a bit south of Athens, so, so it's very touristic and the port of Hydra uh, Cora is uh, just on the left hand side of the picture. You can see there's uh, there are five mills uh, on the crest and this is a very ideal position um, for those kind of mills and uh, all, all the millers they, they all knew this. Um, on mountain tops, crests, slopes between elevations, the wind speed is significantly increased um, by the topography of the terrain. And this is uh, the Bernoulli effect. And own measurements, uh, what we did, showed that we have a factor of two or even more, uh, only 10 meters above the ground compared to undisturbed wind. So it's um, Bernoulli boosters the performance of small wind turbines uh, with shorter towers quite a lot. And exactly these locations we have to find also for new turbines. Um, our goals, we are want definitely to uh, increase incentives to reconstruct historical mills um, with reinforced towers um, and uh, use them for local power production. We want to erect new turbines, new towers, maybe steel masts if it's tolerated. Uh, fully automated rotor mechanics with sail rolling uh, in storms and at calm, and also sail trimming uh, at low winds. Um, low maintenance, um, this is one of the prerequisites uh, and robust rotor mechanics for hot, dusty sea climate and at least uh, 20 years minimum lifetime uh, to be sustainable. Um, Sabent, uh, and this is, we are working hard on that, uh, uh, will be smart and uh, we will uh, monitor operational data. Um, we transmit these data uh, to, to the web uh, and, and lock them. Um, we have remote operation, diagnostics, predictive maintenance and safety monitoring. Uh, last not least, uh, maximum power point uh, MPP control algorithm, which is not ready yet, but uh, we will uh, implement this. And uh, very nice to have is uh, Sailwinds, like uh, Hydra, the example. You see there are mostly not just one, many of them. So in local clusters um, and also for wind farms, which may come, uh, we want to establish algorithm for increased cluster efficiency uh, like it is known from offshore wind parks. You can increase the total efficiency of all the um, machines uh, by about 10%. Um, so in fact, this is a big, big chance uh, for electronics. Um, We, by the time now, we um, designed a CAD model uh, of a prototype, say Wind 4. Um, and uh, this uh, rotor has four meter diameter and about five kilowatt generator, and it's variable in height. Um, now you might uh, ask why a prototypes first? In fact, it's um, the, the machine size uh, of the original uh, sail windows have about eight meters, 10, normally 10, 12 meters, or even 14 uh, meters in diameter. So they are quite impressive, these machines. And uh, as in literature, it's written only very little about loads and all this stuff uh, for a safe scale up. It's a scale up factor of, of nearly uh, 10. Um, we would like to investigate a prototype first and design it properly um, and uh, modify it in a way that it will work. Um, so it's um, uh, not covered. You see, this is uh, the, the prototype here is uh, uh, without cladding. You can clad it uh, um, traditional or modern, whatever. You see the rotor. And uh, the gondola, we say, or mill head, 
and, and the bearing and, and the tower, which is a very, very easy design. It will have modular design, so we can disassemble and uh, assemble it quite quickly. Um, uh, it will definitely have uh, rolling and trimming of sails, smart electronics, uh, as I said, and all parts also of this machine are corrosion protected. So we can send it to test fields and also, uh, let's say, to uh, Greece um, for further tests and investigations. A little bit more into details, um, the design details. Uh, we started uh, to design it with uh, 10, 12 masts, uh, but now we are changing to 10 masts. I will tell you why. 10 masts and 10 sails. And you see each sail uh, has um, sheets. So we have 10 sheets for sail trimming, like a sailor is uh, doing this. Yeah. Uh, the front part of the rotor is called antenna. Um, so you see for the rotor shaft, we have two bearings here. Um, we have a disc brake for the rotor. Um, here the generator, gearbox and timing belt. And uh, uh, underneath the platform, you see Azimut slewing ring bearing, uh, cable rolling, uh, because we have to transmit signals and power from the gondola uh, the, from above to the tower. We have an azimut brake and a servo motor uh, driving uh, a chain drive um, for the yaw control to turn uh, the mill into uh, the wind. Um, key of the whole thing is um, we designed um, a sliding guide with a servo motor. And this sliding guide is located here. And you can see it, uh, um, not in detail, but uh, the servo motor is pushing a push rod. Um, and this push rod operates in the hollow shaft. So by translatoric uh, movement of the push rod, we can roll and trim the sails. Um, how is it done? Um, to the push rod, there are sleeve, there's one sleeve connected and a number of other sleeves uh, can be moved on the front part uh, on the antenna to operate the sails. There are springs and so forth, and the whole mechanics are covered by lids. Um, so this is quite tricky, but we didn't want to have motors uh, on the rotor because then you have always the problem um, the, to supply uh, energy supply to the motors and uh, signals and you need a sliding ring which is uh, very sensitive to dust and salt and so on. We didn't want that. So for the just straightforward, um, we have these motion sleeves and these sleeves operate uh, wire ropes and uh, these you can see a number of those wires here it's, uh, they are for rolling and trimming the sails quite tricky but um, we think uh, it's uh, it's quite nice and straightforward for us uh, for a prototype in fact big sail winds will not have wire rope mechanics definitely not they will have motors on the rotor but for the prototype uh, to prove feasibility. We wanted to just have avoid problems with that. We think the, um, the biggest potential for optimizations have uh, the sales. Um, and the first big question is the optimum sale cut and profile. Uh, in former times, sales were just, you see it on the left hand side, um, sales were just plain and flat cloth. Uh, modern sales on boats, they have uh, optimized sales uh, profiles and um, um, they are designed. Um, but, and the question is, uh, can we use a sail from boats uh, for sailboat? We think no. Um, but in fact, um, for our simulation, we used a boat sail cut. Um, um, just straightforward, but uh, we are going to optimize that. Um, the reason is uh, on a rotor, the peripheral speed outside uh, is um, dependent on the radius and outside much bigger than inside. And this is why also um, we need 
um, a belly of the sail more on the inner side than on the outer side. This is known from sailing uh, on boats. So um, we started with a, a sail cut from boats, but uh, for the future we will go to optimize this and uh, with special profiles, uh, what we need for sail wind. This is uh, very important. Another question is how many sails and masts? Um, um, the Portuguese type of uh, sail wind mill, they have uh, normally eight masts. The Greece type, they have uh, 10, 12, or even 14 masts. So what is the optimal numbers? We don't know. And also the area of the sails, we would like to increase the area of the sails. Do we need overlapping? Uh, overlapping the sails uh, means that one sail, the flow, of, uh, airflow from one sail, the aerobin makes can disturb the other sail. So we uh, have to avoid this disturbance. And also what is the best area of the sails? Um, and uh, do we need maybe other shapes? Uh, so these sails are triangular, um, but uh, we have to think of it. And um, as we want to trim uh, the sail, uh, like a sailor does with uh, um, tightening the sheets and uh, loosening the sheets, uh, we want to have the best angle of attack, AOA is the abbreviation for maximum power for adjustment when the sail is uh, unrolled or even half rolled. So uh, we started with uh, CFD simulations um, and normally we did it with uh, a periodic sector um, and it's a cutoff of the whole system. So it reduces the computational times. Here you have the entrance with constant speed. This is uh, in front of the mill. Then you just see we simulated one or two sails in the sector. We can uh, also uh, verify, um, vary the, we can vary the volume of the, of the sector and so on. And this is the axis here. Um, we also did some uh, simulations uh, with the total rotor, but it takes quite a lot of time. And we came back to, to these sectors because the, the solutions are more or less identical. Um, um, the, okay. Um, here are some results. I have to look uh, for the time. Some results um, from CFD. Uh, I plotted the power, the aerodynamic power per sail uh, on this axis, and uh, the other one is the angle of attack in degree. And uh, for three different wind speeds uh, at fixed lambdas of 0 0.5, 1.2, 1 1.5, and um, 2. So the rotor speed was given for the simulation. And what you can see is uh, you have a clear maximum curve here for the power per sail. Um, it's uh, not a surprise for a sailor um, at low rotational speed uh, means uh, at, at lower um, apparent um, wind, uh, we have to have it, the sail wide open, so the angle of attack will be 45 to 50 degrees. Um, by running faster, um, it goes to 35 degrees, 25 degrees, and 20 degrees. So um, the faster the rotor is turning, um, the tighter uh, the sail and the profile should be. So I took these data, it's about 70 complete simulations, these four diagrams. I took the maximum data and plotted them again. This time um, I multiplied by 12 uh, aerodynamic power total in kilowatt uh, over the angle of attack. So I extracted the best values and plotted them here. And you can see again for 10, 14, and 18 meters per second, you see um, uh, the curves, there are three curves, and you can easily see for 10 meters per second, uh, it doesn't play a big role, but you need a wide open sail. Um, and uh, for 14 meters, it's, uh, the curves become steeper. It's about 35 degrees, and for 18 meters per second, um, it's, um, it's about uh, a bit more than 30 degrees. But we will not run 
uh, 18 meters per second uh, with unrolled sales because the generator uh, is five kilowatt um, and uh, due to losses and so the aerodynamic total power should be about 5.5 kilowatts. So we are very near 40 meters per, per second, which was in fact our first estimation, but now it's confirmed by um, the computational fluid dynamics. Um, the, lotted, uh, the dotted line in violet is uh, the, the maximum curve. So we have to adjust the sales and this makes a lot of sense. Um, let me summarize the results from CFD. Um, there are a lot more. Uh, we found uh, that 10 sales of 0.96 square meters are much better than 12 sales uh, of 0.65. But this is, seems to be uh, to increase more, it's not good because overlapping of sales has to be avoided. They disturb each other. Um, then, uh, as I said, about uh, five kilowatt at 40 meters per second was a first uh, estimation, quite good. Now we have a, a power coefficient of 0.26 at a lambda of 1.2. Uh, which is about, yeah, could be 1.5, something between 1.2 and 1.5. So it's a very slow running rotor. And as I said, the angle of attack should be between 20 and 50 degrees. There's, um, there are quite a number of open questions. So a quick view uh, on the cell controls. So uh, this is, in fact, we have the sliding ring, uh, sliding guide in the lab. Um, the most left position is uh, um, lowest wind speed, um, then, and the wind and the sails are unrolled completely. Um, at uh, the zero point is uh, 40 meters per second, where we reach maximum power point uh, at five kilowatt. Then we start to roll, um, which means we have to keep the power constant. Uh, and then uh, at the end, shutdown regulation at, and uh, shutdown at about 25 meters per second. We don't know yet, but we will, we will see how stable uh, the design is. So further activities and outlook, um, we will continue with CFD and will couple CFD with uh, finite element modeling. Uh, so it's a coupled uh, simulation. So, um, the flow will deform the sail, and th this is very important. And this is how it is done at modern yachts. Uh, completion of the smart controls, PLC and uh, microcontroller uh, programming. We have to finish this, it's uh, in work. We already designed with the conceptual design of uh, Sailwind 12. Um, um, then we have to do the cluster thing with, uh, we think, we will uh, apply artificial intelligence for us. And um, what next step is, we want to construct Sailwind and uh, with donated money and funding, uh, we need about 50,000 euros for the hardware. Uh, and uh, some companies uh, already gave us money so we can nearly can start when the, when the, when the reach 50,000 euros. It's just hardware. Um, on a long-term basis, we are searching for a cooperation partner, a company where we would like to share the, our know-how and their know-how to just make Sailwind 12, 12 a very good uh, machine and um, also um, maybe found a startup. Quick conclusions, uh, Sailwind is a new innovative unique type of wind turbine, quite a big potential. Um, it's accepted and complies with the uh, uh, nature conservation demands, um, has smart electronics, as I said. Uh, the rolling and trimming is essential, as uh, I could show, I hope. Um, we have to further optimize uh, the sail cut and also the area. And uh, we think that we are reaching, we may reach uh, a power coefficient of uh, 0.3 and, and maybe plus. So, um, Sailwind 12 will have about 50 kilowatts at 40 meters per second, very realistic for windy locations. And uh, we think that Sailwind could become a substantial contribution to REST, um, together with 
photovoltaic in rural and touristic regions in southern Europe. The potential is quite big, uh, we think, for in, in numbers and uh, as an acceptance on grid or off grid. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, happy to get your questions. Um, sorry, but I am just... Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, are there any questions? <coughs> yes. Uh, Thank you, Dita, for your presentation. I am coming from a project in the MENA region regarding green corridors for marine. Green corridors start from Australia and then Taiwan to Canada. How to make your, your, your vessels greener? So we are working in two dimensions. One is to change the type of the fuel to go for green hydrogen. And the second one is to have safe sails in the vessels itself. So we are, we are looking to decarbonize the marine work in what's called a green corridor. 140 harbors around the world with these vessels. So it should be comb combination between playing with the type of the fuel, whether to be methane or uh, ammonia, and added your design of having the Greek sales for uh, the marine vessels. Could you please comment on that? <laughs> not, sorry, I, thank you for your question. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if I got it right. Um, um, we, we didn't think of marine applications uh, so far. So it's, um, uh, so step by step, but uh, definitely we think that uh, uh, sailing could be a solution for not just Greece and Italy and Portugal or Spain uh, or uh, Turkey. Um, in fact, uh, it could be uh, could be marketed say, worldwide. Um, in fact, uh, our next step definitely has to be uh, to prove uh, the feasibility that is working. And as I can tell you, um, Sailwind 12, uh, or let's say maybe Sailwind 14, probably um, uh, this is quite a size for us and we think we, we could not make it bigger. Um, so um, that uh, because we will have wire ropes on the rotor, it has to be very stable for strong winds and um, so a rotor stands in the wind with all the wires, so it uh, may cause uh, vibrations. But we don't know yet. Um, but uh, definitely um, the wire rope mechanics uh, with the sleeves, uh, we don't have on, uh, on, on big machines. This is just a solution for sailing for. Did I get, is this the answer to your question a little bit? Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there is a question from Garrett. Yes, uh, I, I love the idea. I think it's great to bring back historical monuments in a, in a modern way. Uh, but I was wondering, ha have you done any economic studies to understand what your cost of energy would be uh, yeah. based upon your system? Yeah, um, just finished a bachelor of thesis uh, and we'll have a presentation on a congress in Augsburg. Um, the, the, the student, she was uh, very good work. Uh, in fact, uh, we found, uh, we. The, the target was um, what could be the investment costs of uh, sailwind, and uh, she found out that um, for a south meter uh, rotor, the rotor, just the rotor mechanics, uh, it can be about uh, 140,000 euros for the rotor, um, and uh, in fact, uh, when operating at a fairly good um, location with uh, average wind speeds of about uh, seven meters per second. You have a payback period of 10 years um, and uh, the cost of energy is about um, eight to 10 cent per kilowatt hour. So um, we are quite uh, confident uh, that we would uh, just meet the market demands. So this is a uh, this is a fairly good value, I think, uh, for, for um, a small wind turbine. So it's profitable within 10 years. Um, 
And uh, as we don't know yet, uh, the investment costs of, uh, of Sable 12, it, it will take uh, some more time because we have to finish our cut design of Sable 12. Um, then we know, probably know, um, how much it is eff effectively. But so far, it's, uh, it's quite a good result. Uh, Perfect. Uh, Thanks a lot. Quite promising, I think. And Mike, there is a question from you. Good morning, Mike. <laughs> good, good night. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Dieter, that's very interesting, um, and what a great topic for student studies. Uh, I salute you for that. Uh, that's how I got trapped into this industry. So, um, the um, my, my question is: uh, in my house, I have quite a few motorized shades, um, and they're synchronized. They so I can raise and lower. Um, uh, all the shades at once. Have you looked at, at uh, using uh, the mechanism of motorized shades uh, instead of the, um, the pulley system that you have uh, for uh, furling the, the um, sails? Yeah. So we will have motors on the, on the rotor, but not for the prototype, but for the big machines. Yeah. Um, so um, the, the big question is, um, and this is where we work on that, in the moment together with the company, um, how can we transfer the energy for the servo motors to the rotor without a sliding ring mechanism? You know, normally you have sliding rings, but uh, we found out that sliding rings will uh, cause a lot of maintenance. Uh, we have to change uh, every year because of, of wear of the sliding. So we think, and we are working on that, um, we are going to transfer one kilowatt onto the rotor via uh, um, inductive transmission. We have a, okay. an inductive transmitter for sail wind, for bigger sail winds. Um, and this inductive transmitter can transmit uh, not only the power for running the servos on the rotor, but also for um, um, the signals. So we, we don't have sliding rings and uh, this is uh, a no-go, we think, uh, for uh, um, uh, a robot's machine. Okay, thank you. More questions? Uh, then I have one, uh, actually two in one. So you mentioned about the, the people acceptance. And uh, on that regards, have you have you considered have you talked to municipalities? What's their reaction? And that's the first one. And the second one is when the system is ready, do you think it will be allowed also for tourists to go in and see it as a part of a uh, yeah additional tourist attraction? <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, it's a good question. And in, in fact, it is. Um, we know that there is a good acceptance because we're, some. You know, the authorities tried to convince us just to start with a big machine. And I said, no, we have to just learn about the system with a smaller machine. So I, um, um, I said, well, if we are ready, I come back to them. Uh, because in tourist uh, regions now, um, the people start to renovate and uh, reactivate these old mills. And... Um, like on Patros, uh, Pat Patmos, sorry, the Patmos island in Greece, uh, uh, they have restored with a lot of money from a Swiss banker, they have uh, uh, restored uh, uh, three Patmos mills on Patmos Cora. Um, but one is just a museum now and they cannot uh, run it. Um, in fact, you know, the machine it's just the tower and it's empty. We only need a little space for the switch cabinet. Not much. Um, so you can see nothing inside. And uh, one of our targets is for the big machines, we want to um, develop a, a azimut bearing, which is um, um, has a damping. So the, the rotor can run and maybe you can live inside. Um, so many of the old mill towers are renovated now for holiday homes and so on. And you can have offices in that or whatever. Um, so um, 
during nighttime, maybe we have to switch it off, but um, during daytimes uh, for sustainable tourism, um, why not having a holiday flat inside? But it doesn't make sense to have a museum inside. Uh, you know, most of the mechanics, the mill mechanics uh, are rotten or um, disassembled. Uh, they are not there anymore. Well, uh, of course, that's, uh, that's, that's one part of it. But what I was thinking more, it was also just, just having some posters, some explanatory panels inside or so. Yes, yeah. We yes. could see in, uh, like in the surroundings here, we yeah. have the test center for large wind turbines. And yes. that's meant to be a test facility. But then the municipality also put in a little bit of tourism. And it's actually attra attracting really a lot the attention of people. There is not much to see. But just a little bit of explanation, just, uh, you know, you get part of the system and then, yeah, you like it more. So uh, you're absolutely right. We have, to, we have to inform the public in any way, uh, which is quite strange because in Greece, you don't have uh, newspapers uh, over the whole country. Um, most of the people, they have uh, the Internet. And uh, so we have, by the way, now we have uh, good contacts to activists now and uh, it's uh, spreading uh, in Greece and uh, maybe in other countries and um, on my last page um, on my last page um, you find uh, the contact data and all the internet page we have uh, for sailwind-power.eu so um, um, we, want, we want and we need to inform the people but we know that there, are, we spoke to many people and we always got a very positive feedback. It's, it's, it's good and, and we think it's, it's a good time for that now. So uh, it's, it's very, very important uh, local energy resources to utilize them. Yeah, really good, thanks. Any more questions? No. Sorry for a bit over the time, but I think... Yeah, yeah, of course. Then, then uh, I would like to thank you.